for a second there, guys. So I'm sorry if I if you guys uh, <laughs> if you guys didn't see me there. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, this is one of those games where look, this is one of those get right games where you can able to actually finally play a complete game. But at the same time, though, this could be one of those trap games. So Mike Davis actually leads the league in rushing, believe it or not. I know that's that's hard for some people to grasp, but it, it's true. Um, I don't know if McCaffrey is supposed to be back, but they may kind of, you know, break him in slowly. So I don't know what yeah, happens exactly. there. Um, look, I think they're like near the bottom against the run of the defenses. You know, the one defensive guy that they do have, um, I think his name is, I got look him up for a second, but yeah, I think like one of their top defensive guys, you know, I know short's gone once again, you feel bad for him. He's gone for the season. The other well, there are a few defensive guys. Zach Kerr, the one defensive guy that's actually really good. Unfortunately, he's questionable because he's in concussion protocol. So, I mean, they should be able to kind of run this defense if they run the ball more. But this could be one of those games where you think maybe they could win, but then again, you never know. So, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. If they give David Montgomery the ball, keep Teddy Bridgewater and them on the sidelines, and you'll be fine. I'm also, too, worried about the Bears' uh, run defense. Of course, they've had their issues all year. We're not going to bring up Bailey Goldman because we all know that he opted out uh, before the season started due to this pandemic. But with that being said, uh, we saw what Adrian Peterson did uh, against them on opening day. We saw Ronald Jones bust out that 30-plus yard run on last Thursday night. We've seen examples of the Bears giving up the big play in the running game. Look at, at that Colts game, which was terrible, and the Bears' run defense uh, didn't show up there to start the game. This is a, a game that the Bears should impose their will. They had a couple of extra days off because they played last Thursday. There's no excuse for the Bears coming out slow. If they come out slow on Sunday, it's going to be real problems. And if they happen to lose the game to an average team at best, uh, a few people are going to have a whole lot of questions to answer, and I don't want to hear any excuses. And this is this is a time where the, where the Bears, the schedule gets really tough. They got the Monday mm -hmm. nighter against the Rams next Monday night, and they got a couple other tough games after that. So it'll be interesting, they though. Yeah. That's what they need. Yeah. This game. They need this game. This game will put them at 5-1, and one, and they can lose a couple and still be around the fight. So that's why they need to win this game. Yeah, defensively for the Carolina Panthers, Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis aren't walking through that door. So to your point, Sid and, and Lakina, you know, the Bears can the, the Bears will definitely have some opportunities to make some plays. Uh all right. So what else is on the schedule? Uh, are we going down the going down the weekly schedule here? Yes. Yeah. Uh and for those of you, you know, the Raiders, the Saints, the uh, Chargers and the Seahawks are on by. So this is sort of a sort of a light schedule this week, if you will. Um, there's only three, three, only two three o'clock games, I should say. So, all right, first up, we got, I don't know if this game's still up in the air. I mean, this the schedule keeps changing. Um, we got Broncos and the Patriots. The Patriots apparently just had another positive test. So I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if this game is still going to go, but we'll, we'll uh, make our predictions anyway. So who wants to start? Um, I'll go with the Patriots. Cam Newton's supposed to be back. I don't know about um, uh, get Stephon Gilmore, but uh, Denver is on a third or fourth quarterback or what have you. Uh, Mark Rippon's nephew is supposed to be starting, I assume. Uh, New England is at home. They're the better team. Uh, hope if, as long as they don't sleepwalk through this one, they should dominate the Broncos. So I'm going with New England at home. Uh, I'm going with New England, but I'm rooting for Denver Center. Lord Christianberry. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, New England here, too. Too much Cam Newton. New England as well. I don't think it'll matter if Gilmore is there or not. Really, uh, not. No. No. Uh, Texans and the undefeated Titans. Uh, Houston, I go quiet for Houston got right last week, but they won't get right uh, this week. Tennessee continues to win, even though their quarterback almost broke his ankle trying to do a Julius Irving layup in the end zone. <laughs> I don't know what what made him break out the finger roll. I, I hey, I don't know, but I, I bet you won't try that again. But he did make a quick side on pass, and uh, but that finger roll, man. But Tennessee should win. Houston did get back right with the changing and the applying of the pink slips. So I'm, I'm gonna go with Tennessee though. All right, so 
you, 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 I mean, hadn't got to talk about this, so I'm just going to give you my quick reaction. Yes, finally, <laughs> the Texans did what they were supposed to do. You guys know how I felt about this team and that coach, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, and, and so did the Falcons. Yes, way to go. Um, but, but listen, the Tennessee Titans may be the most complete team in the entire league right now. I'm not, I'm not talking about the end of the season or, you know, the middle of the season. But right now, they may be the most complete team. Um, I don't want to tackle Derrick Henry. No, n- nobody nope. should want to have to tackle Derrick Henry. N- n- nobody. Josh Norman, bless his heart, but he's a meme now, forever. Um, so but you should go back to Fox TV. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I, go, go low. That's all I can say. Go low. And, and, no, and, go with two. Well, again – that won't work either. Go, go with the prayer. I mean, don't, don't try to tackle Derrick Henry head up. I don't know how many times that has failed for people to not get that lesson. Anyway, I digress. Um, big blowout potential here, at least in my opinion. I like the Titans. I like them kind of big. I got the Titans as well. So do I. All right, we got a good one here in the AFC North. We got the Browns and the Steelers. Uh, this is a rematch game since uh, Miles Garrett and Mason Rudolph both uh, made themselves look like fools on national television last fall. Yes. Uh, Pitch, uh, Cleveland is actually looking like a playoff contender. Uh, Pittsburgh, they survived a shootout against Philadelphia, the in-state rival, interconference rivals last week. Cleveland, I think they're going to put up a fight, but I think Pittsburgh is going to uh, be too much for them. Cleveland, they got to show me that they're a real playoff team. If they're a real playoff team, They'll, they'll have to beat Pittsburgh in my mind. But uh, coming up close doesn't count in the National Football League. I'm going with Pittsburgh. They're the better team. I'm going with the Roethlisberger Express still. The Roethlisberger Express is rolling, man. And he got another receiver to throw it to, too. It's rolling, Chase bro. Claypool. Yes, Chase is rolling. Yeah, I, I kind of like the Steelers in this one, too. Um, you know, Pittsburgh's playing well, you know, n- not for fantasy purposes. You know how I like to get my jabs in, but uh, he needs to start finding uh, Juju Smith-Schuster a little bit more. He you know, will. He <laughs> will this week. I actually think he will as, as, as an analysis this week, but I like Pittsburgh. I like Pittsburgh, too. I'm still not a Cleveland believer yet. I'm not. I'll be watching this game in its entirety via my computer. <laughs> All right. All right. You got here we go. We have the intra conference matchup. We got the Ravens and the Eagles. I'm, uh the Ravens gonna blow the Eagles out. Period. That ain't the Eagles ain't got nothing. That's how I feel about this game. And the Ravens gotta prove something to a whole bunch of people right now. Cause they're getting a lot of doubters. People talking about Lamont and fell off, or is he hurt? They're gonna show people he ain't. And I don't think the Eagles got enough to stop them, even though they may have finally found themselves a wide receiver that can stay healthy. I'm you know, going Baltimore. Yeah, I, something tells me this game might be close. I don't know why, guys. I, you know, I tend to be wrong usually about these things <laughs> most of the time. So um, I, I think, again, I think this game might be close. I'm still going to take the Ravens, though. Um, just because Philadelphia, they they got another guy on their offensive line out. I just saw that a few minutes ago. So yeah, they they, their O line is just in shambles. I can't give them much of a chance here. Yeah, I'm with you, Jason. I, I think it's good. I think it's gonna be a blowout. I don't think it's gonna be close. Okay, I see it. <laughs> All right, NFC East, where everybody's still in. Apparently, the Washington and the Giants. Um, I'll, I'll start first here. Um, first of all, I just want to give a, a big applause to Alex Smith. Yes. Um, you know, hey. one of those, I got to watch uh, uh, the few minutes of that game when he was in. I mean, I am so happy for him, but Lord knows I was praying every single bit. Uh, th- that offensive line in Washington is, is, is horrible. It's horrible. And I think he got sacked like five or six times in that small amount of time he was in the game. So you just, it's one of those things where you just wince, right? Every time yeah. you, you know, you cringe, every time you see somebody try to wrap him up and take him down. But uh, so happy for him just to get back out on the field. A little bit more on Washington. I, I think what's happened to Dwayne Haskins is a crime. I think he's good. I, I don't think he's been in, been put in the best situation to succeed. I just don't. Um, but, you know, the NFL is what it is. You know, these things happen. I'm hoping he can get a second chance somewhere with a better offensive line and better weapons around him. I think he's got some potential. 
but they made the move and that that's what happens. Uh, to the game, though, I'll reluctantly take the Giants. You stole the words out of my mouth. I'm going with the Giants. I'm not. I'm going to go with Washington. That's my upset of the week. Washington going to win, man. Because it's, it's, a, it's a conference battle, and they got all the quarterback comp. I think Kyle Allen going to start. The Giants will win. I mean, Washington will beat the Giants, man. Uh, I pick it the Giants. Uh, it's going to be one of those six three nine six sort of type games. I just see it with these two. It so usually I'm, is. Y'all leaving me out there by myself. It's cold out there. Extra blankets. Extra blankets. Extra blankets. Extra blankets. Okay, two teams that, that we thought would be a little bit better than they than they are right now. You got the Falcons and the Vikings. <laughs> Uh, I, I, since yeah, I laugh, yeah, since you're I, laughing, I, I, I guess. I mean, I still don't think Atlanta. I mean, I'm, I'm Atlanta. I was like Atlanta until they win, win. I'm gonna have to go against them every week. So I'm gonna go with Minnesota. Get right a little bit if they run the ball. If they run the ball, they get right because they got a backup over there that's running the ball. Also, that that shows you right there that Minnesota can't run the ball if they choose to run the ball. So hopefully they run the ball. And they should be the, uh, beat Atlanta, though. You should be the Vikings offensive coordinator, Lamont, because uh, they got away from that in that second half against Seattle, which which was the game they should have won. The Vikings are back at home. Atlanta's still trying to find themselves, even though Raheem Morris will be the interim coach from here on out for the Falcons. I have Minnesota at home. Yeah, I've, I've got Minnesota pretty much only because they're at home. Um, got to keep an eye on that on that injury for Dalvin Cook, although Alexander Madison is is very capable. He had a really good game in relief. Um, I told you, Lakina, I told you. Yes, I was did. tempted to pick that upset with the Vikings over Seattle, but I ended up didn't, so I still want some credit. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they should have won that game, though, right? I mean, yeah. Minnesota should have won that game, but they didn't. Um, I think they'll win at home. Yeah, I think Minnesota was going to be one of those get-right games for them, too. I think this will definitely help them get that morale because I don't think they're going to be in a very good mood because I feel like that Seahawks game slipped away from them. It did. So I'm going to pick the Vikings. All right, you got Lions fresh off a bye against the Jaguars. I'm going with Garden Minshew, a.k.a. Porn Stash, over Detroit. Yes, Detroit had the bye week last week, but Jacksonville – uh, they didn't look that great against Cincinnati, but who who does? Like we all said, that Cincinnati will be improved in a couple of years, and they built uh, built uh, built that team right. Uh, Detroit's going down there in that hot weather in Jacksonville. Jacksonville has a little bit of better defense. They're actually a little bit better on offense than what people give it credit for. Keelan Cole, their wide receiver, and DJ Sharp. Watch out for those two. They can light up that bad Detroit secondary, and if they do, they can win this one going away. But I think it's going to be sort of close. So I'm going with Jacksonville at home. I'm going to get in the car with you, and I'm going to go with Jacksonville. And if Detroit, <laughs> if Detroit get blowed out, we might be seeing some more pink slips and link cards. Oh, it's coming. It's just a matter of when. Yep, <laughs> yep. oh, it's happening, yeah. Yeah, you took, you took that word right out of my mouth as well, Lamont. Um, I, I like Jacksonville in this game, although this is probably one of the main games of the week. Um, yeah, I think this is Matt Patricia's last game as coach. Um, you know, the, coming off of, especially if they get blown out, coming off of a bye, um, I don't think he survived the plane ride back to Detroit. So, so I'm going to take the Zach Don't leave him. Don't leave him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it's been done before. It's been done before, hey, folks. Yeah, Just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. It's been done before. Um, I'm going to pick the Jags, too. I, I think, yes, I know Detroit's been out, off a bye, but the fact that Patricia's still there, it's insane to me. It's pure insanity, but I think the yeah. Jags will win it. All right, next up, we got the Bengals and the Colts. Bengals and Colts. Uh, you know well, who's going to leave that pick? <laughs> what, you don't want nothing to do with that pick? Uh, uh, no, no, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Um, Nobody wants to do that. Well, give me my pick. <laughs> so, I, I, I think, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I was looking at this game earlier. This is going to be one of my upset picks. I'm going to take the Bengals to upset the Colts here. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. Um, you know, there are some rumblings already down in Indianapolis about maybe possibly making a quarterback change. Going to Jacoby Brissett um, from, from Phillip Rivers. Listen, 
if you're a Colts fan, if you're at the Colts front office, you knew what you were getting when you signed Phillip Rivers. This guy's turned the ball over his entire career. He's good, but he turns the ball over. And there's no doubt about that. So you're starting to hear some quiet rumblings about who's going to be under center. I think it'll still be Phillip Rivers, but I like the Bengals. I like a sort of low-scoring game with the last-second field goal to pull this one out in an upset. I'm 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 gonna go against him simply because I was reading some of that too, and they gonna they gonna do the whole injury thing like they do in L.A. to get Rivers out of the game and get the backup quarterback in the game, and, and they gonna make that change. But Indianapolis gonna because that's all they really need to become a little more dominant. So I think they're gonna pull the trigger this week with an injury to Philip Rivers. <laughs> I'm going with the Colts. Me, that's a good pick. Me too, going with the Colts too. All right, AFC East battle here. You got the Jets and the Dolphins. Um, I'll start. I'm just going to go right out the way. Ryan Fitzpatrick has another big game. I'm picking the Dolphins. Me too. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I, 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 I can't believe I'm about to say this. Don't say it. <laughs> I can't believe I'm about to say this. Uh-oh. Don't I think say, the Jets are going to upset the Dolphins. What? They, huh? they, they, they've got to win I think one game up. this season. I think they've got to win one game this season. I think. <laughs> I but I'm going to take, I'm gonna take this one. <laughs> okay. For no particular reason, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, we, we can we can reconvene on Monday. We'll, 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 all, we'll all yell at Jason, okay? Yeah, that's what <laughs> I'm saying. It's, it's I, Black Lady. Yeah, I'm picking the Dolphins for the second week in a row. You saw what they did at San Francisco last week on the road. I expect them to do the same thing uh, again against the Jets. I know it's an AFC East division matchup, so it'll kind of be close, but the Dolphins, as long as they don't get ahead of themselves, they should do the same thing again. That Jets team is terrible. Yeah, they're they're terrible. Talking about the Dolphins, I'm going with Miami. Yeah, nobody's arguing that the Jets aren't terrible. I know that. I know that. But I <laughs> <laughs> Jason got Joe Flacco mania. That's all. Is, is he okay? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> look, look. Again, I think the Jets have to win at least one game this year, and I'm I'm going to take it over a divisional opponent. It, it, it won't be the Bills or the Patriots. So do they play the Giants? Do they play the Giants this year? That's they one win if they do. No, the, no, they don't. No, they don't. They don't play the Giants they play this the year. Last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that they'll play. They win. All right, uh, go look. Taking us back, you know, take this train on the tracks here. <laughs> we got the probably one of the games of the week. You got Green Bay and Tampa Bay. I'm going with Tampa Bay and the Buccaneers. Uh, I know Green Bay's had a great start to the season so far. They've been carried by Aaron Rodgers, who should be an MVP candidate. Yes. Uh, with, with that being said, their defense hasn't been tested. If you're Tampa Bay looking at that loss at Chicago last Thursday, you better straighten up that offensive line and clean up the penalties because if you don't, that overrated, great, overrated Green Bay defense may tee up on Tom Brady. If you don't want that to happen if you're Tampa Bay, if you are the Buccaneers, pound the rock, pound the rock. I don't know if Leonard Fournette's going to play or not, or whoever's running the ball. You, if you want to keep Aaron Rodgers on the field, um, Clock the management, running the ball, and make sound decisions. If, if the Buccaneers can do that, they can walk away with this game. It's going to be close. I, I think Tampa Bay has a, a, enough to win. They just got cut down on the turnovers and definitely cut down on the penalties. That did not happen last Thursday in Chicago. Um, I'm going to say something that I hate to say. It hurt to say. <laughs> Green Bay going to win. Uh, okay, I said it. All right, now. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I mean, they're going to win for a couple of reasons. Do you honestly think Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers can sleep at night knowing that the Bears beat Tom Brady and he didn't? Do you really think he's going to let Tom Brady outshoot him, man? No, he's going to outshoot Tom Brady, and Tom Brady don't got enough bullets left in his arm to shoot with Aaron Rodgers. All that other stuff out the window. It's going to be a Brady Rodgers. And Rodgers will not let that happen. So, yes, it hurts my heart to say Green Bay going to win. Yeah, yeah. I – man, <laughs> I, I like want to really pick the Buccaneers <laughs> in this game, but I, I just don't see anybody stopping Aaron Rodgers right now. I just don't see it, especially coming off of a bye. Um, and, and the Tampa Bay Bucks, they, they, they've got some alarming trends. You mentioned them, Sydney, turnovers. 
and penalties. Not championship quality at all. Um, I think it's going to be high scoring. I do. I think there are going to be a lot of touchdowns being scored and thrown. And, you know, whoever's got fantasy, you know, players there, they're, they're, they're probably going to be happy at the end of that game. But I just don't see anybody stopping Green Bay right now. Not right now. Me neither. I, I just don't see it happening either. I know, yeah, I know that they got an extra week off Green Bay did. So I think they'll you know, clean up some of those adjustments. And those trends, like you said, Sid, we saw here in Chicago last week. I, don't, I think it's going to continue in Green Bay. And I think Green Bay is going to stay undefeated. All right, battle here in the NFC West. You got the Rams and the 49ers. I'll start. I'm going to, I don't know if Dalton, I, I mean, I don't know if Garoppolo is going to start for them, but I don't think it's going to matter. I think they Aaron, say as now, yes. As of now, okay. So I think Aaron Donald will probably be swallowing him up whole, and uh, he'll probably have two or three more sacks. And um, I You're think the Rams, I think they're, wait, hold on, hold on, Lamont. Um, I think the, the Rams are going to beat him pretty handily. Yeah, he, he gonna put him right back out. I agree with you. He gonna put him right back out. Yeah, yeah. Gar Garoppolo shouldn't have started last Sunday. He shouldn't have started. Um, you know, that's th th just what it is. Um, so I don't think I don't think whoever's starting at quarterback for San Francisco, it doesn't matter in this particular week. Um, I I think the Niners may get blown out again. Um, the Rams got too much firepower, especially on offense. They're they're cooking, and then, you know, obviously when you got Aaron Donald on that defensive line. Yeah, it's kind of scary. I like the Rams. I like them big. All right. First of two Monday Nighters. You got the early Monday Nighter here. You got the Chiefs and the Bills both coming off losses. Anybody? Uh, I'll start. I'll start. I'll start. I'll start. For me, this okay. is the game of the week uh, between these two teams. I, I think, I mean, let, let, you know, I would set the over-under at right around 70 on this game. <laughs> I really would. I think there's going to be a lot of points scored, um, you know, which is, what we like to see sort of in this day and age. Uh, the Chiefs are going to be a little angry. Look, they were due for a loss. I don't, I don't put too much stake in their loss. I just don't. I think they're still, you know, they're, they're obviously still the defending champs. Um, they're right there. They're probably 1A for me uh, when it comes to best teams in the AFC, uh, right there with the Titans, in my opinion. Uh, the Bills are really good. You know, can, can Josh Allen keep his momentum going? You know, I think they need to get Devin Singletary involved a little bit more. Um, but I like the Chiefs to go on the road and pull this out in a close game. I'm, I'm going to pick Kansas City, but if they lost, it wouldn't surprise me because Buffalo got a bad taste in their mouth, so it wouldn't surprise me. But I'm going to pick the Chiefs. I'm picking the Chiefs as well. Lakina, check all of the all, over and under numbers from Las Vegas and let's see if we can get Jason to bet that. Lamont did it before, and he lost by a few points of, with a Green Bay um, – uh, Atlanta game a couple of weeks ago on Monday Night Football. One touchdown by Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan couldn't score six points. That's why yeah. I know. <laughs> Good grief. Uh, hold on, as I look that up, it's 57 and it, a half. It, it, yep, yep, 57 and a half. I'll take the over on that. Okay, we got you down for the over. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to pick Buffalo. Got gotcha. you. I'm picking Buffalo. I'm going, I'm something out. I'm going to pick uh -oh. Buffalo. I, I think, look, that loss against the Titans, I'm sure Josh Norman's going to have nightmares about, you know, Derrick Henry coming at him. I, I, I think this is going to be – yeah, I think this is going to be one of those, you know, games. Plus, it's going to be in Buffalo. If this was an arrowhead, I could probably see the Chiefs winning, but it's going to be in Buffalo. So, Josh Allen has a, has a great game. Devin Zanger has a great game. I mean, the Raiders gave you the formula to, to beat them. So, I think they'll use that and – this will be a good one, too, one of the games of the week. The other Monday Nighter, you got the Cardinals and the Cowboys. Um, I start. Um, I need Arizona. I'm going with Arizona. I'm still a fan of Arizona. I need them to win because I don't want the Andy Dalton can lead the Cowboys team somewhere. Talks to start and the Dak Prescott contract talks to start. I don't need none of that drama. I just need Arizona to go in there and knock their head off like they're capable of doing. Dallas defense is in flux. Kyler Murray needs to go down there, use Hopkins, do his thing. But, yeah, I don't want all of that. We don't need Dak stuff to start in Dallas. So, I need Arizona to go on here and handle that. I'm going with the Arizona Cardinals as well, Lamont. I know Chandler Jones, their defensive stud is out for the year, I believe. Uh, with an injury. But on the other side, Dallas' Cowboys defense has been terrible all year. I know they had injuries, too. You saw the way they had to struggle just to beat the winless Giants 
with that being said, Kyler Murray, do not turn the ball over. Run the ball. Keep that Dallas defense honest. If they could do that, the Cardinals will win this ball game on the road on prime time. I'm going with Arizona. Boy, to me, this is a pick 'em game, guys. Even mm -hmm. with Andy Dalton under center, um, I don't know where to go with this game. I think we all feel the same way about Arizona. They're a good team, but you know, are they there yet? It doesn't look like it, right? I mean, showing a little bit of inconsistencies. They've been getting gassed in the defensive side, Sid. And, you know, with, with, with Chandler Jones out, you know, that, that gives me some cause for concern. Um, I'm with you, Lamont, on the Andy Dalton possible narrative, right? Because, you know, he, he obviously came in and played well, you know, in, in Prescott's absence. I, I won't get into that and how he's been done so wrong in Dallas. I, I won't get into that. We don't have the time. Um, but, you know, I'm wary of that Andy Dalton narrative, like you mentioned, Lamont. Yeah, okay, it's I, Man, I, I, I think I'm going to go with the Cardinals here. I'm going to go with the Cardinals in a shootout. 55 is the over Smart under. Beat. So I'm going to, yeah, so you might as well take the over, I guess. And look, I know, I know Jones, you know, losing Jones is like the one defensive, good defensive player that they have, but they have a lot of good young guys. But look, Dallas' defense is nothing to write home about either. So this could be one of those high scoring games. I think the Cardinals will just enough to win this game. It'll, it might come down to a field goal, but I think the Cardinals will win it. All right, oh. last but not least, Panthers and Bears. I'm going with the Bears. I told you, I think this is going to be the one complete game that they give you. This is the Lakina complete game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put the pressure on the Bears as well, even though my head tells me Carolina. I'm putting the pressure on the Bears. If you, if you think that you're a, a complete football team, if you are a playoff team, and I know head coach Matt Nagy said that everybody needs to get better. He needs to get better, by the way, a better play calling, by the way. <laughs> With that being said, uh, the Bears have some extra days off. They need to set the tempo early. I'm going with Chicago. I'm going to go with Chicago as well. Um, there is a bit of reluctance here, but I, I will go with Chicago. Um, I still think it's a close game. They play pretty much all their games close this season. Um, you know, I, I think it'll be a last second score, but I also think this is a game where David Montgomery will shine. I, I, I just think hopefully Matt Nagy has gotten it through his head to get this guy the ball um, more, more consistency and in more situations where he can actually succeed. Right. Um, I think, you know, again, I think it'll be some back and forth here a little bit going on, but yeah, I'm with you. I think I'll pick the Bears too, but again, I'm doing it reluctantly, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Carolina. But I wouldn't be surprised if Carolina pulls it out. I think Terry, listen, Terry, Terry Bridgewater has done very well. I think he's only lost like once against the Bears when he's starting. We saw what we did last year against the Saints. Yes, I know with different personnel, but the Carolina's got a the Carolina's a young team. Matt Rule has his guys believing in them, and they think they can be right there for that division. So. I figured, hey, sure, why not? So we'll see. Gonna be interesting. And those are our week six picks. You know, like, oh, go ahead, Lamont. Yeah. No, I'm saying, like you said, if, if Bridge want to have an attitude for the Bears insulting him in free agency, and Mike Davis has an attitude for being here and not being used at all, it could happen. I mean, I'm going with the Bears, but it can happen. Look, I wouldn't be like this if they lost, right? Because it can happen. The Mike Davis revenge game, this might be. So, and we know that the Bears have not done well against the run. So, that could be the case. Yeah. All right, let's go to the college gridiron real quick with all the weird stuff that's been happening. There have been a lot of games that have been postponed from LSU in Florida to we still talked about Oklahoma and Baylor. And now Cincinnati and Tulsa, their games have been postponed. So, what do you guys think of all this has been going on with all these games being postponed? That when they when they threw and remember we talked about it a few weeks ago. I told you that college would be the first to start letting them people back in because they needed their people back in to just to have games. And you see how coaches wasn't that Florida coach that just said that he went to the uh, government. Yep. I mean, went to the state and asked, "Can you have eighty two thousand? And yeah. now your game is postponed." Come on. I mean, you knew this was going to happen in college when they started bringing in. I mean, I love LSU football. Don't get me wrong. 
they hold a hundred thousand in there when they want to. But sending thirty thousand up there ain't the safest. And now you got the Saints talking about moving to play their games down there so they can bring some people in. So I mean that that's gonna be it's gonna be interesting with all this COVID breakout down there. Like I was saying before we went on the app, either shut it down until you find something to do or stop all together. Unfortunately, college football won't stop all together, unfortunately. You can maybe stop then, uh, even though it's supposed to be between 10 and 20% capacity, maybe you can stop uh, letting the people in maybe. But uh, I think college football is going to have the same mentality as the NFL. Lones do not have a major outbreak. I think they're going to push through. I'm looking forward to Alabama. They're playing on, on CBS on Saturday night in prime time. As I said before, when I saw their game a couple of weeks ago against Texas A&M, I never see Alabama so uh, their fans so scattered, so spread out. This is the times that we live in. I'm sure we're going to see the same thing on Saturday night. So you know, we, I, I talked about this, you know, before we officially came on air, guys. Uh, and I'm and I'm not, you know, trying to pat my back here, right? I'm not trying to give myself credit, but <laughs> I, I have been saying this. It, this is a matter of time. This is a matter of a win and not if situation. Um, I, I again, I I can't help but start to think about these young student athletes because we're we're talking about kids here, we're not talking about adults. So, the NCAA again, I'm 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 just not going to harp on this, but there is a grand lack of smarts when it's been coming to dealing with this whole situation. So I'm not surprised that we're seeing these games postponed. Um, Again, I just go back to the safety factor. I don't, I don't, you know, the season probably shouldn't have been played in the first place. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. It's, it's unfortunate that this is happening. And, but we, we knew, we warned all of you that this was going to happen. But you know, everyone was like, let them play, let them play. But then, you know what, look, look what's going on here. So we got coaches, you know, getting COVID. You got players getting COVID, you know, outbreaks all over the country and these campuses. So, I don't know, but look, I'm looking forward to the Georgia, uh, Alabama. That should be a fun one. Um, Pittsburgh and Miami, that's always a fun one, too. So, you know, there are some good games. But like I, like I said, you know, if in a couple of weeks, once the Big Ten comes in, and then after that, the Pac-12 comes in, you know, all bets are off, yeah. folks. And I'm looking at uh, in, uh, Texas A&M, Mississippi State. That, that should be interesting. Yeah, that should be a good game. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I want to see K – KJ Costello got benched after throwing for 600 yards against LSU, but how does that happen? Well, well, because it's it's because Mike Leach doesn't care, and I mean that in the in the sense that he's gonna do whatever he wants to do to win a game. Like he doesn't like I'm not saying that he doesn't care about his players or anything like that, but yeah. I think we all agree that Mike Leach is a uh, mercurial character, shall we say, a bit eccentric. And the guy uh, that's came in and threw three interceptions. Both of them threw like three interceptions last week. I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter who you put out there as long as you keep running the same play. Exactly. But no matter who you put out there. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. you know, uh, again, I, I think uh, I think it, that that should be a fun game. I'm looking for a lot of points scored in that one too, though. Yeah. How about Kansas and I believe West Virginia on Big New Saturday on Fox? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that should be a good one. That should be a fun one there. I mean, down in Morgantown, that should be interesting. Um, Kentucky and, and Tennessee, that should be a fun yeah. one there. We'll see if Tennessee can bounce back. Um, Florida State, North that's Carolina that might be fun. That's in Knoxville. That, that's in Knoxville? Oh, because, yeah. you know, Kentucky Kentucky has so many people that they came. What, what, that was what Florida was playing. What was Florida playing? They said the, the fans had so many people that, that the noise was affecting them. That's what made him go back and ask, can he have fans? That last place they played, he said the fans were the reason he couldn't get his calls right. So, yeah, that that's anywhere in the SEC gonna have some noise. I'm not gonna say it should be an upset alert, but you know Georgia Tech they've been playing well. Clemson I think should. I don't I, I don't think Dow was gonna let them uh, go look too far ahead, but I think you know just just you know just be careful with this game. They're gonna be in Atlanta, so that should be a good one there. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, we'll be we'll interested to see what. Virginia Tech and the ACC. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, too. Oh, yeah. We'll see Virginia Tech bounce back from that loss to North Carolina last week. 
That should be a good one. Yeah, see, North Carolina. I think they could be on upset alert going down the fourth. Who does Arkansas play this? Arkansas, um, let me sure. Let's find out. Ooh, ooh, that's what we're doing. Let's doing it now. Uh, but yeah, so but yeah, it'll be interesting though. I mean, some of these games. Look, there'll be some interesting games. Like we'll talk about it next week once the Big Ten comes back. That'll be an interesting one there. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know. If, you know, they'll be able to finish. I just don't think that they got all missed this week, Lamont. Okay. They got who? Ole Miss. Ole Miss, <laughs> Ole Miss might be in trouble because <laughs> don't yeah, nobody. Yeah, they lost a close one to Alabama last Saturday night, so one of those teams has got to get back on track. Yeah. But uh, and don't nobody – Arkansas, no respect. So, Ole Miss might think they could just wally, molly whop them and come up short. Mm. So, uh, I'm going to have to check. I'm going to have to turn to the SEC network and see can I pull that one up. Yeah. Look, some good – like I said, some good games this week. We'll, let, we'll reconvene on Friday, you know, but with the Big Ten coming back. So, it'll be interesting, though, nonetheless. Uh, real quick, I know we're, <laughs> we're – yeah, yeah, exactly. So, real quick, Sid, well, do you think uh, do you think Tony LaRusso ends up coming to the White Sox, becoming the new manager? <laughs> uh, the ship, uh, the answer should be hell no. I respect Tony LaRusso. He's one of the great baseball minds of all time. Let him enjoy, enjoy his semi retirement. Leave him alone. I know him and Royce have been in contact for like the last forty plus years or so. But this smells like an AJ Hinch. Hiring to me. We talked about this on Monday, Lakina. I know we'll talk about it some more in our, in our next podcast, but this smells like an AJ Hinch hire to me. They, as I said on our last podcast, if you shouldn't have fired Ricky Renteria if you didn't have your guy. The Sox have that guy, but they're going to leave no stones unturned, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's AJ, AJ Hinch. Now, of course, no one can announce anything until after the World Series is completed anyway, so we'll have to wait a few more weeks for this. Suspense and drama, air quotes. <laughs> you, you think they want the AJ back to hit old man, really? Like, everybody going to have to bring up the Black Sox if they hire AJ Hinch. We got to go through all of the old stories again. And Tony La Russa, great manager, respect the hell out of you. But come on, man, I just don't think he in touch with this modern side of baseball right now. And I think he can be a great advisor, but not a great hire. And I agree with you. Yeah, and the A.J. Hinch thing, I mean, I don't think we want to rehash this whole Black Sox scandal. We don't need no – and then with a young team that's on the uprise, we don't really – they don't really need that extra camera in the locker room, so to speak, to, to be <laughs> – if they do good, then you're going – I mean, they just don't need it, man. And I don't – like you said, they shouldn't have went on from Renteria if they didn't have a solid candidate to go to. So – so, yeah, I, I mean, I kind of agree. I thought Ricky Renteria deserved maybe one more year. Um, you know, I didn't get to talk to you guys about this on Monday. Um, but also the move was going to be made at some point anyway, right? But, uh, I, I, well, I have a question because I, I don't know, but is, was the A.J. Hinch suspension for a calendar year or was it just for the season? Because it's, I mean, it's just for the season. season. It was for the season. Yeah, it was just okay. for, like, the calendar. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, if, if that's the case, then I, I would imagine that the, he's probably their guy. I mean, I, I would imagine so. Um, he looks like the perfect candidate, you know, young up and coming team um, for AJ Hinch to sort of mold and, and, you know, take under his wing. Um, so I wouldn't mind that hiring, I guess, but you're right, Lamont, there, there will be questions if, if he is hired, you know, he will not have to run away from those type of questions if he's uh, the manager of the Chicago White Sox. So we'll see. Which is why, I, which is why I think the whole this whole La Russa thing is a smokescreen. I think, hey, you know, let let, let White right. Sox people yeah. be mad and get angry and get upset because you know, look, they're, they're a big fan of social media. They know what's up, so they see all the comments and stuff like that. Their social media people are very on it, so that's why you know, look, let's leak Tony La Russa's <laughs> name. You know, the 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 Ryan's of connection, blah blah blah, and then you hire AJ Hitch. He's like, okay, this guy's not so bad. But they might pull the other AJ out their back pocket and just trick us. Like you say, smoke screen. AJ Hinch? No, we going with the other AJ. And pull it out their back pocket and say, roll with it. What are you talking about, Przinsky? <laughs> On that note. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. They, they, I mean, you know, they interviewed him the other day. He was talking about he loved his job on the booth and all, but he'll be willing to leave it because you can't pass up an opportunity such as. So, they, it, like you said, it might be a big smoke screen. Pull, I mean, pull them out your back pocket. I, I wouldn't 
be all that impressed with that move, but if they know something I don't, hey, that's why they get the big bucks. That's why I think it's Hinch. I think it's Hinch, and it's just going to be a matter of when it will be announced. They'll do their due diligence, but I think it's going to be A.J. Hinch. All right, mm-hmm. on that note, you follow because me. Because Corbin's going back. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Corbin's going back I've, to the right I've got one, one. Go ahead. Um, one quick thing before we get out of here. Um, I didn't know if you guys were, were going to touch on this, but I will. You guys can also follow as well. But um, I had the pleasure some years ago, even before I knew uh, you guys, um, to meet Vaughn McClure. Yeah. Yeah, um, I was going to. And, and he, you know, he, he tragically, he passed away uh, yesterday. And it was brief. Uh, you know, he was still covering the Bears for, for Chicago. And again, you know, I got to meet him briefly. He went to the same school that I went to. Um, so I got to mention that to him really quickly. I didn't have a whole lot of time with him, but uh, I just, you know, uh, I, I want to say rest in peace to a, a good man, a great man, and um, you know, just just sending prayers and thoughts out out to his family because, again, you know, the sports world lost a good one yesterday. Totally. Yeah, I, agree. I was going to ask y'all had y'all had any. Yeah, I, I was going to ask y'all had y'all had any dealings with him, um, because I knew he was from here, but I I, I never had any dealings with him. But I was going to ask you all had you all had any. Yep, I got to meet him really, really brief, like literally like a minute or two. <laughs> but but yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was a big fan of his work when he was here in Chicago covering the Bears for the Tribune. And of course, he moved to ESPN. He, he continued to uh, do great work there. He will be missed. Yeah, and just you know, tragically, you know, in recent months, he lost a lot of family members. You know, if you saw the picture, one of the last Instagram, Instagram pictures he did was with him and his father, who passed away earlier this year. And I think another, I think a couple other family members he lost too. So just uh, tragic. But hearing the stories, you know, Jeff Differ- Dickerson, who I we had we had a chance to meet Jason a, a couple of years ago. Um, he shared mm-hmm. a story with him, and you know, of course, you know, J- JD's uh, wife, you know, lost her bout with cancer last year, and that Vaughn was there for him. And you see, until some of the other stories, our, our good friend of the show, Dion Miller, shared some stories too when. She first, you know, started here in Chicago. Vaughn was still there covering the Bears. And so, so, so you know, the other stories, you know, Jenna, Jenna Lane, who does a great job covering the Bucks. So lots of, you know, ESPN, ESPN NFL family lost a lot. And Chicago in general lost a, a great one. So rest in peace to Mr. McClure. All right. And on that note, you follow me. Yes, absolutely. Indeed. Um, on that note, you follow me at Keena McGee on Twitter. At Keena McGee on the Instagram. Follow me at Lamont Scott on Facebook, Lamont Scott 69 on Instagram, and Lamont Scott 16 on Twitter. And you can follow me at Truth and Reason underscore on the Twitter, and you can also follow the show's Twitter handle at 2NDCSCHI. You can follow yours truly on Twitter and Instagram at SidKid80. Once again, that's SidKid80. That's S I D K I D 80. That's S I D K I D 80. You can check out our website at we are regalradio.com is w e a r e r e g a l radio.com and you can check out our podcast second city sports along with our other programming for war media by simply uh, searching for war on anchor which kicks you over to spotify itunes soundcloud stitcher wherever you download and google play wherever you download your podcast make sure you search for war on anchor we're also on iheart radio when you download the iheart radio app please 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 type in your search engine box War on Anchor, that's W-A-R-R on Anchor. And we also on YouTube, where you are watching us right now. Type in your search engine box on YouTube, War Media, that's W-A-R-R Media. And you can watch us like you are right now. Voila, there we are. All right, so stay warm uh, out real, there. Real quick, guys, what we got in the game tonight? Oh, uh, I, I, think, yep. um, I think the Astros will force f- f- game seven. Ooh. And I Ooh. think the do- okay. yeah. Yeah, and I think the Dodgers, they're not going to go out like that. So I got them winning tonight. We, I think we're going to Dodgers. I think we're going to get uh, the World Series nightmare. <laughs> Atlanta, Tampa Bay. Don't nobody want them now. So I, I want it. Tonight. I want it to happen tonight. <laughs> I, I, I want it. I want it. Um, I know. We're going to love each other. So we keep fighting then. Yeah, yeah, I'm a you know I'm a baseball purist, so I don't care who who's playing. Um, I like to see good baseball and I like to see new blood. Um, didn't get a chance to get into that really, really well with Nick Hamilton, but you guys know how I felt about the Dodgers. I I, I called it. I, the Braves are going to take them out. I think they actually take them out tonight. Um, 
I actually think both series end tonight. Um, Carlos Correa is backing up his talk, so I'll give him a ton of credit for that. He's backing it up, but um, is I, I think too much Tampa Bay tonight, too much Atlanta tonight. Yes, and Fox, I'm with you. I will be Fox, watching. And the Fox executives are already freaking out. Uh, <laughs> so for That's the guys, okay. I'll <laughs> Yeah, so for the guys, I'm Lakina. Stay warm, stay safe, wash your hands because, you know, the, the COVID cases are spiking here in Illinois. So come on, guys, wash your hands, you know, keep your distance and wear your mask. So everybody, please stay safe and we'll see you next week. Peace. Go Bears. Till next time. Huh?